Uh, to start session two, we invite the Otago Excursion Train Trust from Dunedin to the stage. This group of dedicated volunteers play host to cruise ship and charter train passengers and are fantastic ambassadors for their region. Here they are now to tell their story. Kia ora tato, I'm Dave Cull, the Mayor of Dunedin, and first off, a big thank you to Trust Power and the Far North community for their hospitality and welcome, and to all the other volunteer groups for their inspiration. Way back in the, in the 1970s, the Otago Excursion Train Trust began running excursion trains to the Blossom Festival at Alexandra. Other excursions were run to the South Island's west coast, scout jamborees to Hastings and Fielding, young farmers' conferences from Bluff through to Okaiho, Northland and snow trains to Arthur's Pass. Then establishing the Tyree Gorge Limited through the ruggedly beautiful Tyree Gorge was overwhelmingly the work of the volunteers of the Trust. Fast forward to 1990 and the imminent closure of the Central Otago Line when fundraising led by the Trust enabled the purchase of the line to Middlemarch. The Trust's volunteer work continues to this day supporting our train and our community. Dave represents the Dunedin City Council, who's the other shareholder in our company, the Tyree Gorge Railway. And the part of the Target Excursion Trains mission is to support the Tyree Gorge Railway. But there had to be a start. Without the initiative and the creativity of our early volunteers, the Trust would not be in the position it is today, part owner of the second largest railway in New Zealand. Our early volunteers worked hard to retain the heritage aspect of the carriages some of which came from the New Zealand Railways in a very sorry state of repair. It was necessary for our early volunteers working in the open at Burnside to make parts to fit the carriages because often the parts, the templates, didn't exist. This was the first carriage with new wooden sides being fitted. And then the finished product. And finally, it had a trial run. Next, it was a move from Burnside to Anzac Avenue near the railway station. And these photos illustrate the work that had to be done. Now, I used to pass this site on the way to work regularly, and I often wondered, now, what's going on here? Never thinking that I'd become so involved with the trust as I am now. Volunteers come from many walks of life. They arrive at the Dunedin Railway Station around 7 o'clock. There is a briefing on the train, and this includes such things as safety notices, carriage allocation, passenger numbers, special meals, and any other information such as, guess what, birthdays or wedding anniversaries. Our volunteers move to their carriages, often wondering who they're actually going to be working with this day, as it's likely to be a different person each time. I work with my wife quite often, but others work together. Work begins finishing... <laughs> Did I say something funny? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> work begins checking lunches, setting tables, placemats, cups, saucers and wine glasses. Now down at ship's side, now New Zealand or Port Chalmers is one of the few places where the train comes right alongside the ship. A couple of paces. Yeah, and you're on board. Yep. Passengers coming off the ships can be very slow. It's like Brown's cows. <laughs> the number of passengers will dictate the size of the train, and sometimes we have 360 to 380 on board. And nationalities, it's been known to reach 33 on one ship. Now, you try and work out 33 possible countries and languages. Yes, talk about languages. You try talking to a Japanese family when only one of them can speak English. Guess what? The nine-year-old. Yeah. So we can have two cruise ships and two trains, and this can involve up to 50 or over 50 volunteers. Very early on, the Trust considered providing for disabled passengers. And we built this hoist carriage utilising grants from the charitable trusts. Our volunteers need to be quite versatile, have a good general knowledge and a uh, capacity to work together as a team. Now, some have to work behind the scenes, making sure that everything is in the right place at the right time. Morning stop at Wingatui. Tea and coffee are collected from the buffet. But not all Americans drink coffee. For some reason, they like our tea, even if it isn't decaffeinated. Now, unfortunately, as we all know, trains sway and move. And it's quite an art to try and pour coffee and tea without spilling it. And at night, you count all the new bruises from being bounced off the seats. <laughs> about there. Yeah. 
Come on, it's your turn. Hinden, retail therapy. Mention that word and the Americans go mad and the Australians lock, lock away, away their wallets. wallets. And all men agree with me, no matter what the nationalities. Shopping is not, not a sport. sport. <laughs> now, wherever you travel, cameras always appear. Photographers love getting out on the open platforms of the carriages, and sometimes they get very crowded out there. Yeah, our volunteers need to have a working knowledge of all different types of cameras, as we're often asked to take photographs when people can't get to a particular place to take a photograph. Now, at Bukarangi, the same thing happens again. Retail Bell therapy. Do you have to belt me? No. Oh. The ladies have a wide range of locally made goods. And cruise ship trains arriving at Hindon and Pokerangi have had a growing effect on the district. In Dunedin, the impact is far more significant in all areas of the tourist industry. Tourists to Dunedin attractions such as Larnox Castle, Cadbury's, Olverston and Harbour Tours have a maximum capacity, whereas the train can expand to accommodate up to 450 passengers simply by adding more carriages. The newer carriages seat 44. And this may be placing carriages that were had a capacity of 24. Now these larger ca carriages are hosted still by two volunteers. If the demand for seats is sufficient, two trains can run one after the other. Some volunteers, uh, the afternoon trip goes north to Merton and uh, some volunteer hosts stay on, working up to 13 hours in the straight and walking up to 14 kilometres. I know I did it with a chronometer. Others leave and a new team come on for the afternoon trip. Now while the retail therapy is taking place, the volunteers are still hard at work, setting up for lunch, and we don't forget to serve New Zealand wine. None of that foreign rubbish. Lunch and a wine, then a little doze. You know, so I, trains kind of do that. The most counted sleeping in a carriage of 26 was 18. <laughs> Friendships are made. This was 15 years later from a meeting on the train when the volunteer on the left was 15 years old. And 18 years later, and it resulted in the uh, American woman wedding invitation. And 18 years later to the right, this couple came out back on a cruise ship to spend the time with me, the volunteer host. Repeat travellers are common. They often recognise their volunteer host from a previous trip on the train. These three American women were visiting the Deep South during the last Christmas break. They heard of the train and expressed an interest in coming on with us. They were teamed up with an experienced volunteer host for the day. They had a ball and they said it was the highlight of their trip to New Zealand. Our volunteers love riding and working on trains. Where else would you get to meet and know people from all over the world just by giving up a day of your time? Oi, come on. So. The volunteers from the Otago Excursion Train Trust are literally the backbone of the operations of our company, the Tyree Gorge Railway. Without them, the operation of the excursion trains could not be possible. They're a credit and a huge benefit to our community and to New Zealand. Kia ora. Thank you.